Don Trunke improved the care of injured patients in the United States and around the world. He was a skilled trauma surgeon and a scholar. However, his greatest influence was his strategic vision that implementation of trauma systems would reduce the burden of injury. For the first 22 years of his life, Don Trunke lived and learned in rural eastern Washington state. Don acquired confidence. He became practical and resourceful. Well, uh, when I was in the seventh grade, I was playing football, and we, we played tackle football without pads. And and I got tackled and I hit the clothesline pole and I broke my wrist and my dad came home that night and took me down to the general practitioner's office. And the general practitioner would go in and read a book and then come out and try to manipulate my book or my, uh, my uh, wrist because it was an epiphyseal fracture and it was dislocated. And he kept trying to relocate this wrist fracture and my dad would hold my arm and uh, then he'd put me under fluoro and try to reduce it then go read the book some more. Finally, after about three hours, he found out if he cocked my arm out in an ulnar deviation that it was reduced. And so, uh, in the next eight weeks, I would go down once a week to get my cast changed because I continued to play football and the cast was all broken up by the end of the week. And I just decided right then I was going to be a doctor. After becoming a husband, Don achieved a considerable improvement in his college grades. In the fall of 1959, he was admitted to the University of Washington Medical School. Don Trunke enjoyed medical school. Don realized that he was drawn to the enormous satisfaction of performing a curative surgical procedure. Don applied for internships that were six months medicine and six months surgery. In 1971, Professor Dunphy offered career advice to Chief Resident Don Trunke. A pivotal moment in Don Trunke's career was his interview with Professor of Surgery J. Engelbert Dunphy, an elite American academic surgeon. Don marshaled his gifts for persuasion. Dr. Dunphy, an astute judge of surgical character, recognized in Don an individual with exceptional potential. During his internship, Don Trunke decided he would be a surgeon. But first, duty called. Captain Trunke provided general medical care to troops and dependents in Germany. In June 1966, Dr. Dunphy, who had become the chair of the Department of Surgery at the University of California, San Francisco, offered Don a training position. One-third of Don Trunke's training as a surgical resident was at San Francisco General Hospital, which was the city's only trauma center. Don identified these individuals as teaching him how to operate. In 1982, Don Trunke wrote, Dr. Dunphy, more than any one person, is responsible for starting me in my surgical career and for providing initial support and nurture that it required. Dr. Dunphy trained over 30 surgeons who became influential and accomplished academic leaders. Don admired Dr. Dunphy. I think the thing that set him apart from all other surgeons, though, that he was such a humanist. He really... Uh, championed the patient and and you had to do what was right for the patient you didn't do unnecessary surgery or you didn't do debilitating surgery at the end of their lives I mean he always talked about the quality of life and uh, I think the thing that I learned most from him is when to operate and when not to operate that was so important Don Trunke sought career counseling from Dr. Dunphy did Dr. Dumphy provide you advice about an academic career? Oh, yeah. was, what, what kind of advice? Well, you? I went, I went and uh, saw him in December of my chief resident year, and I said, Dr. Dumphy, I thought this over. I, I said, I really think I want to stay in academic surgery. And uh, he said, well, what do you want to do? And I said, well, I would really like to do trauma. He says, well, there's only one thing to do. And he got on the phone right then. And he called Tom Shires and he says, I want to send somebody down July 1st. Can you take him? Yes. And that was it. I didn't have any choice in it. <laughs> As a young attending surgeon, Don received from Dr. Bill Blaisdell, Chief of Surgery, San Francisco General, valuable guidance. Now, when you were a faculty member, how did he uh, handle you? He treated me like a son. And it was remarkable. I mean, I thought I had a second father. Of course, I felt that same way about Dunphy. I mean, 
I mean, it was just a totally different relationship as a faculty member. I mean, he was, I guess the, the word that would uh, epitomize his relation then was nurture. He wanted me to succeed. Distinguished Australian professor of surgery Russell Strong, a master liver surgeon, has been a friend of Don Trunkey for 40 years. Professor Strong wanted to testify today that he observed Don resurrect a patient. Dr. Strong was astonished this man shot through the heart, made a rapid and uncomplicated recovery. Don Trunkey was a shrewd advocate of trauma systems. First, he would publish research that a community without a trauma system had a high preventable death rate. Second, the research results became the basis for a public discussion. The issue of whether a community should have a trauma system became political. The Orange County experience provide an example. Don Trunkey co-authored with John West and Robert Lim this paper that led to the Orange County trauma system. John West had trained as a general surgeon at San Francisco General. In 1977, West was in practice in Orange County, California and called Trunkey. West explained that in Orange County, ambulances transported injured patients to the closest hospital. West said that many trauma patients died of delayed or incompetent medical care. West could not convince his surgical colleagues to implement a trauma system. Don proposed a study. Seriously injured patients treated in Orange County would be compared to similar patients in San Francisco, where all seriously injured patients were taken to San Francisco General Hospital. The results of that research were that Orange County had an appalling preventable death rate. The West Trunky Limb Study provoked a public policy debate that culminated with implementation of a trauma system. Trunkey's tactic of using a preventable death study to inform the public of a need for trauma system was a process repeated across the United States. Within 15 years of beginning his academic career, Don Trunkey was a leading academic surgeon. In his presidential addresses, Don argued for acceptance of his thesis, the right patient must be treated at the right hospital in the right time. Don Trunkey in 1978 joined other reform-minded surgeons on the COT. They were committed to establishing new programs that were intended to improve the care of injured patients. Don Trunkey found in colleagues like Dr. Tommy Thompson, a fellow advocate eager to bring about improvements. Dr. Trunkey and COT colleagues encountered opposition. And the Committee on Trauma, as you implied, were these young people who were doing trauma surgery and they wanted to change the, uh, the way we provide trauma care in the United States. And there were so many things we wanted to do. Uh, ATLS came on, and then we wanted to translate that into foreign languages, and then we wanted to have a registry, a national registry. We wanted to, to uh, go around and uh, review those programs that had been appointed in the various states as level one or two centers, and then verify them. And uh, there were there was just a number of programs that we wanted to get up and going, and we just met absolute incredible resistance. ATLS, uh, it took almost a year to get that through the Board of Regents, uh, and then they finally approved it, uh, and uh, that came in in 81, and we started teaching that, and, and that, was, that was good. In 1986, Dr. Trunkey followed in the footsteps of Dr. Dunphy and was appointed the McKenzie Professor and Chair of Surgery, University of Oregon Medical School. In 1985, Don Trunkey volunteered to serve as a general surgeon in the U.S. Army Reserves because I was concerned about the shortage of surgeons in the event of war. Don was 48 years old. After Iraq invaded Kuwait, Colonel Trunkey was mobilized. His unit was deployed to Saudi Arabia and treated patients injured by Scud missile attacks and American casualties from land combat operations. In a controversial after-action report, Colonel Trunkey listed multiple major problems he identified in the U.S. Army Medical Corps. He wrote that many military surgeons lacked experience with treatment of trauma patients. Equipment and supplies sent to the war zone were inadequate and outdated. Methods of evacuation of wounded were limited and disorganized. The Army Medical Corps chain of command rejected Colonel Trunkey's opinions. Dr. Trunkey, exceptionally skilled at communication, was interviewed by national news programs in the months following Desert Storm. Congress authorized a General Accounting Office review that confirmed Colonel Trunkey's observations. 
Six months after his return from the first Gulf War, Don Trunke discussed his war experience in his Fitz lecture. He scolded the American Association for the Surgery of Trauma. He challenged the academics in the audience. Where were the academic medical units that had been deployed during World War II? Don Trunke proposed the program should be organized that enabled military trauma teams to spend time at busy civilian trauma centers. This program was implemented. Consequently, military surgeons deployed to the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan were better prepared to manage devastating wounds. Don Trunke, in his American Surgical Association presidential address, called for further health care reforms based upon the model of trauma systems that measure quality and encourage efficiency. Dr. Dunphy would have been proud. Don Trunke is an icon of surgery, not just in the United States, but around the world. Don Trunke was an academic surgeon firmly rooted in the operating room. What made Don an exceptional surgical leader was his strategic vision. I guess the other thing I would say is if I had to do it over again, I'd do it just the same way. I think surgery to me has been incredible. Uh, I, I think I, I was in surgery in the best of times because you were truly able to be a general surgeon. And that, that's been a real plus. Uh, and um, I, I just, I really think it's a noble profession.